Well, I want you to take a look at the cover here of today's Daily News. Wanted, an honest New York politician, and one arm shooting up here at the table. <laughs> um, but this sums up how a lot of people feel after the week that we've gone mm -hmm. through, bombshell after bombshell of corruption after corruption filled with arrests and allegations. Malcolm Smith trying to buy his way into the GOP mayor's race. I don't realize, I, I'm still lost as to how delusional this was or just how stupid or how dirty, but whatever, we'll talk about that. Dan Halloran, pocketing thousands here with an eye on an NYPD deputy commissioner's job. Again, both delusional and a crook. Assemblyman Eric Stevenson, taking payoffs, then pushing legislation that would help his benefactors. I can keep going here, but we get the drift and I thought, Tom, that um, it, it was to me really um, shocking when you heard the U.S. attorney and how he talked about it. He said, the pervasive culture of corruption and show me the money politics. He pointed the finger at you guys saying, even the clean ones, you're not doing enough to root out the dirty ones. Just how bad is it in Albany? No matter what I say, is uh, <laughs> dangerous yeah, here. You can't. <laughs> Look, we start off with the principle that corruption in any profession is bad. It's particularly bad when you're trading the public's trust. And so th there's there's the correct the, the district the U.S. attorney and the district attorneys are correct in looking at politicians. But let me ask you this: But I think it's unfair you came, when you came to Albany. You obviously uh, weren't you know a virgin to the world of politics. You knew how things worked and you had an idea but when you got there how surprised <laughs> were you and how long did it take to say wow this works a lot differently than I thought. It is not so obvious it is not obvious it, you, you don't see people talking about trading their votes for anything you don't see people uh, you know there are lobbyists all over the place but you don't see that quid pro, pro, pro quo it is not obvious so it, it does take somebody delving in and to the secrets to, to find the types of things that we're seeing here. I think the U.S. Attorney is correct in, in, in doing what he's doing, indicting people who deserve to be indicted. I'm a little concerned about the rhetoric coming from the U.S. Attorney's Office because we don't elect our colleagues. The public elects our colleagues. And they've, in, they've re-elected people who have been under indictment. I can't explain why that happens. It's got to make you wonder. Like, yes. when, you, when, you, when you show up in Albany and you're looking around the assembly, you must be wondering, who's is next? That, is right. that who's guy? next? Is she? Right. Is he? Is, I mean, do you isn't, isn't it everywhere? I mean, think about uh, when Marion Barry was mayor of Washington, D.C. But if you've you got to play the but, Barry card here, well, well, the, the governor, hookers well, in the crack. The governor of Illinois. I mean, but let's go the back governor to of Illinois. Look at, but look at, look at New Jersey. Look at Chris Christie's role as U.S. attorney and all the corruption he rooted out before he became governor. I think this stuff is existing everywhere. Okay, the well, system's working because they're rooting it out. There was obviously a lot of coverage in this, and there were some lines that jumped out. Uh, to, to, to Andrew and myself uh, earlier today. The Post, of all places, I, I thought had a, a pretty strong line as to the pervasiveness of this and uh, this maybe see no evil. Um, uh, and that's, in fact, the title of the editorial that they came out with today where they said, in part, to think that the rot could have reached such levels without a nod and a wink by the entire political establishment and particularly its leaders strains credulity. Um, Dominic, how much do you think uh, people know more than just, uh, you know, the crooks here with the uh, manila envelopes. How much do you think the guys above them say, uh, you know, uh, I'll either turn a blind eye here or it's just part of the way things are done? With all due respect to our elected officials here, you're not part of this group. And it, I, I know this, this is no, going to end well. It's not going to end well. <laughs> it's not going to end well. It takes five minutes, Richard, of being in Albany. I've sat down over dinner with elected officials where they lay out the schemes for me and how it's done. And by the way, some of it's legal. Yeah, the they do. Well, yeah the first, the they, first they lay out the legal schemes, <laughs> how to shake down money with, with the... Um, with the, um, uh, campaign the Campaign contributions. Uh, campaign contributions and with the organizations you start, for example, the member items and Little League. It's all a shakedown. I'm not saying that everyone is doing it, but... All of the officials know who are the shady guys. No, no I'm not pointing at you. You, know, you really did. You pointed right at me. <laughs> but uh, Richard, everyone knows what's going on in Albany. You know who's shaky. You know who's doing criminal things. There are no secrets in Albany. Well, it gets a little bit more muddled when the idea is years ago that 
somebody in the Assembly or the State Senate would go there in a part-time capacity and they'd come back to his or her law office or his or her whatever um, job that they had in private industry. And then we've heard about all the internal conflicts here um, that come out of that. Do you see that as a major problem? Is it more the lobbying influence? Is it more some of the discretionary stuff like the Lulus no, and the think, member items? No, I don't see that as the problem. I see the problem as the need for money. To get elected to an assembly seat, you need $100,000, $150,000, unless you're rich, yep. which is one class of people, unless you want the government dominated by that class of people, normal, everyday people have to raise money. And when you go to your public and say, give me money, what do you get? $100, $200? So if you need real money, now you've got the unions show up, the businesses show up, the special interests show up. Look, they, they got, there's big stuff going on right now. They, where, where are you going to put the uh, where are you going to put the casinos? Yep. Okay. I'm expecting to see them all over the place for the, the rest of the that year. So and that's, many lawmakers in Louisiana where I used exactly. to work. I think there were three consecutive well, governors of Louisiana who went you know, to so, prison. So when you're trying to raise money, now it becomes even if you're trying to be honest. Okay? If you look at my campaign yeah. account, I got $13,000 there. I've lent myself $13,000. That's how I have money left over from the last campaign. So I have something, because I'm afraid to go to anybody and ask for money. Because what's legal, what isn't legal? Yep. You hold a fundraiser, somebody shows up. You don't know who's showing up, and you, you don't, don't know what, what it is they let, want. Let me yeah. ask you a bill, because yeah. Mayor Bloomberg um, <clears throat> said, among other things, that I don't think it can get any worse. You have to have a revolution among voters, he said. I mean, that's an indictment. For, he could have been talking about the council. He could have been talking about Albany, okay? So let's not even play favorites north to south here. I'm saying, is he right that it's reached that depth? Well, he, he's right in this sense. It's one of the arguments that was always made against term limits, whether it was, it was for the U.S. Congress or local legislatures. You know, the idea is that the voters won't take action in their own hands. I mean, you look at the apathy. Mm -hmm. When you look at the primaries, right? So in a lot of these districts, you've got this gerrymandering. You're going to have Republican. It's greater likelihood you get right. arrested than you lose an election it's here amazing. and get removed from Right. It. It's the yeah. same thing nationally. It's the same thing across the country. So I, the only thing I would say is that there has to be a distinction drawn between raising money and lining your own pockets. And I think what we're talking about today in Albany is these guys are lining their own pockets. They're not putting that money into their campaign account saying, I want to serve the people of my district. No, no They're saying, Richard, I want to get rich on this. The, the ones he's talking right? about, and you are a yeah. thousand percent correct, they were crooks before they took office. I, I There's no that. other way to put well, it. One really quick thing, I think we're going to break. I've heard a lot the last day or two, where's Governor Cuomo? He promised to clean this up. Can a governor really clean this up, whoever yeah, the governor is? We, we, he could use his influence yeah. to pass campaign finance reform so that you take the big money out of the equation. And so you're not dealing with these people. And if you're dealing with these people, then you know there's something wrong. Right. You can they identify it, it right away. They did it in Jersey. Right. You can do it in New York. I agree. Really Jersey's bad so when you're clean. going to Jersey, Jersey here. So <laughs> it's the North Star to reach for. But okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have Dominic's one-on-one -on -one with New York City Mayor Hopeful, John Casamitidis. He's not going to have to reach out for contributions. His attorney just arrested as part of the corruption scandal, this time involving not only Malcolm Smith, but some of the folks in the city council. Ms. Casamitidis sounds off on that and a whole lot more. Stay with us.